my daughter wanted to be a pirate for Halloween. I thought it would be fun to make a sword for her costume. I looked around a while for ideas on what kind of sword to make for her, and I saw one of Paul Jenkins' videos on YouTube where uh, he made a sword from one of the Hobbit movies. I thought that was a pretty cool idea, so I gave it a try. I started by taking the SketchUp file and scaling it down so it was about 22 inches long. I thought that was a good size for a children's sword. And then I printed out the pattern full scale. I had a lot of fun making this sword because it appealed to me on a couple different levels. I really liked the overall design because it reminded me of a cutlass, which is kind of a, a traditional pirate sword. So I thought it matched the costume perfectly. But on a more fundamental level, this particular sword is Orchrist, or Goblin Cleaver. Goblins also call it Biter. And this is one of the swords that Gandalf and company find in the Troll Horde during the events of The Hobbit. As a longtime Tolkien fan, this really appealed to me. And considering how much fun I had making this one, I can see myself making a few more swords in the future. You can see where I cut the template down the center. And I did that so I could mark a reference line for the edge transition, and I'll use that when I sculpt the blade later. way to sculpt the blade is to use a spoke shave. And even though I was using red oak, the wood sculpted surprisingly easy. I basically took my time alternating from one side to the other as I worked my way towards the center. And this helped keep everything nice and even on both sides. See here the reference line that I drew down the edge of the blade, and that helped me line up the center. the front of the blade done was onto the back. It was pretty much the same process, alternating from one side to the other, working my way towards the center. spoke shave was a little too big, not really the right shape to get into the, the small curved area, so I used files. I started off with a pretty aggressive cut to hog away most of that wood, and then I switched to the finer side to pretty much erase those gouge marks. all 
four sides shaped, I finished it off with a really fine file to get a nice smooth surface. For the handle guard, I chose to use mahogany to add a nice contrasting color. Cut the handle guard out of end grain mahogany. Normally I wouldn't use end grain like that because out at the far end of the tips the wood is kind of fragile and could easily break. But I'm going to put a little spacer in between there so I'm not too worried about it. filing a little notch in another piece of mahogany and this will help it line up nice and flush against the sword. You can also see that the grain here runs parallel to the other parts so that will help give much needed stability. And with the front done, I did the same thing on the back side. Once the glue was dry, I trimmed off the excess and then picked up the files again to do all the final shaping for the handguard. It was pretty much the same process. Start with the aggressive cut and slowly work my way to a finer file. I finished off with sandpaper, working my way up to a 320 grit sanding pad. And then I flipped the sword over and did the same thing on the top side. I used some more of that end grain mahogany for the pommel guard. I started by cutting the shapes out on my scroll saw. I clamped the two sides together so that I could use some files to do all the final shaping on the inside. I knew that once these were glued to the sword, it would be really hard to get inside those little spaces. files for all the final shaping. The little piece on the back side was in a really awkward position for the files, 
so I used a carving knife to get rid of most of the wood. The last thing to shape was the handle, and this was pretty much the same process as before. I finished everything off with a final pass of the 320 grit sanding pad. This gave me a nice final smooth surface. Of course, the project manager came by. She had the final say. I wiped the sword down with mineral spirits to get rid of any excess dust and to kind of give me an idea of what it's going to look like with the finish on. I love the way the mahogany shimmers. For the finish, I decided to do two coats of clear gloss polyurethane. some fabric from an old renaissance festival costume, so I cut a strip out, folded it in half, and ran a seam down one side. I turned it right side out, which gave me a nice length of fabric to wrap the handle. For the handle wrapping, these are pretty simple wrapping technique. I just alternated over and under, over and under essentially braiding the fabric in on itself. And then I finished it off with a simple knot in the back. I'm going to go back over eventually with some sinew at the bottom to hold everything in place, but the knot works for now. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love the shape of this sword. And of course, the customer was really happy as well. Thanks for watching.